Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll cover how to create a turn-based battle system in C-Sharp. I've created a previous video on this which was for beginners, however this is a much more advanced version this time where we'll be using classes. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start off by creating a new class. Let's go to view, and then select Solution Explorer. Then let's right click over our namespace, go to add, new item, and name this class unit. So within this unit class, let's firstly start by populating our class with some basic fields. So let's create a private integer called current HP. Let's create another private integer called max HP. Let's create another integer called attack power. Another one called hill power and our final one for now which will be a string called unit name now let's create a constructor for our class so using the visual studio shortcut c tool and then select tab twice let's create some parameters to be passed in Then let's assign our fields the arguments passed in. So we will have this dot max HP equals max HP. We'll have this dot current HP and we'll set it to the max HP as well because at the beginning of the battle we want our character to have their maximum HP. We'll set attack power. We'll set heal power and we will set the unit name. With that done, let's now start working on the attack mechanic. So to start off, let's create a public method called attack. And for its parameter, we will pass in a unit called unit to attack. Within RPGs, the damage inflicted on the unit's opponent is not constant and is randomized. Sometimes you can even be lucky enough to land critical hits. To achieve this effect in our game, we'll use a random number generator so back within our field declarations, let's add a private random called random and then we will instantiate it in our constructor. Now let's generate a random number in our attack method. So we will create a double called RNG and set it to random dot next double. So this will return us a double value between zero and one. When attacking, our unit should be able to deal damage between 75% of their original attack power and up to 125%. Any attacks greater than their original 100% attack power will be classified as a critical hit. To do this, we'll need to change the range of our RNG. So firstly, we will divide our RNG by 2, which will change the range from 0 to 0 0.5. And then if we plus 0 0.75, then our range will now be from 0 0.75 to 1.25. Finally, let's calculate the damage dealt based on our original attack power. So we will have an integer called rand damage, and we'll cast it to an int, and in brackets, we will have attack power times our random number. Finally, to actually apply damage to a unit, we'll need to create a new method called take damage, which will take an integer Specifying the amount of damage dealt to that unit and subtract this from their health. So under attack method, let's create a public void called take damage, which will take an integer called damage as a parameter. And then we will set the, our current HP to minus equal of the damage. So back in our attack method, we can now call the take damage method on our unit to attack. So unit to attack dot take damage and then the random damage we just created. Great, our units can now attack and deal damage. As our application is a console based app, let's also add a console dot write line statement printing out the attack damage. We will write unit name plus attacks plus unit to attack dot unit name plus and deals plus ran damage damage. Now let's head back over to program.cs and start implementing some of our game logic. So let's start off by creating a unit for our player and enemy. So we will type unit 
called player and set it to a new unit with max HP of 100, attack power of 20, heal power of 13 and we'll name it player and then we also want to create an enemy unit 75 for their HP, 10 for their attack power, 7 for their heal power and we'll name it enemy mage. Let's start off our game with the player turn. So let's use a console.write line to print a message saying player turn. What will you do? And then we'll take the answer as a string called choice, which will take console.read line. Then if the choice was A, we will let the player attack the enemy. So now let's save our program and test it to see what happens. So it says player turn, what will you do? Let's enter A and it says player attacks mage and deals 18 damage and then the game ends. So great, our player can now attack the enemy, but it would be nice if we could see the HP of both our enemy and player before and after attacking. So firstly, let's go to our unit class and use some properties to get some fields. So we will create a prop called, firstly, we'll do it for the current HP. So we'll name this HP, remove the setter, return current HP, then we can copy it. And below it, we can create a string, name this unit name and return the unit name. So back to our program.cs. Above our player type statement, we will add a console.write line and it will say player.unit name plus HP equals and plus the players HP. And then we will have the enemy's name. plus their HP. So let's also just copy this line after our if statement and when we test our game, it will print out the player's HPs at the beginning and then we'll attack and it says the enemy's mage HP has gone down to 55. Now let's head back over to our unit class and create the healing method. So let's create a public void called hill, which will take in no parameters and we will create a double called rng, similar to before, so we'll use random.next double and then rng equals rng divided by 2 plus 0 0.75 and then create our heal amount by casting to an integer the rng times the heal power. And now we'll apply the heal amount to the unit's current HP. So we will do current HP equals, and we'll have a ternary statement here. So heal plus current HP is greater than max HP. If it is, then we'll assign it max HP. And if it isn't, then we can just assign it current HD plus the heal amount. So here we're saying, if adding on our heal amount exceeds the current HP, then just set the current HP to the maximum HP. And if it doesn't, then just set the current HP to itself plus the heal amount. Then below this, we can add a console.write line saying unit name plus heals plus heal. Great, now both of our opponents are able to heal and fight. So the final thing to do in our unit class is to create a property called is dead that will return whether the unit's HP has hit zero or below. So we'll come back up to our properties we can copy it and change the type to boolean, change your name to is dead and it will return whether current HP is less than or equal to zero. Within our take damage method, let's check if our unit's HP has reached zero or below. If this is the case, then we'll print out a message saying the unit has died. So if they are dead, then we'll print out a message saying unit name has been defeated. So great, that's all of our code for our unit class completed. 
Finally, let's head back over to our program.cs file and firstly we're adding else statement here. So if the player has entered anything else besides A, then the player will heal themselves. Let's give our program a quick run. And if we enter H, it says player heals nine, but as our player HP is already at the maximum, it stays at 100. Now let's allow our enemy to have their turn. As before, we will create a random called random and instantiate it. Then at the bottom of our program, we will add a line saying enemy turn. Then we can create an integer called random and assign it random dot next zero to two. This will return a random number between zero and two exclusive. So it will return either zero or one. And if, if rand equals zero, then the enemy will attack the player. And else then the enemy will heal themselves. Last but not least, we want to keep our game looping until either the player or the enemy dies. So with, let's create a while statement which will surround our turn-based code. And it will have the condition while not player dot is dead and not enemy dot is dead. Then we'll add some curly brackets and then add it to the end like that. So this will keep the game playing while both the enemy and the player are still alive. Then after our player either chooses to attack or heal, we'll just add an if statement saying if the player is dead or the enemy is dead, then we will break out of our loop. And with that, we've now finished our game. Let's give it a try. So let's start off by attacking. So we deal 20 damage. The enemy attacks us and deals 12 damage. Let's try healing ourselves. So we heal ourselves back up to 97. And the enemy decides to attack us. Let's try attacking again. And let's keep attacking until we defeat the enemy. So 2 HP and then it will say after we attack that the enemy mage has been defeated. And with that, we've now finished creating our very own turn-based battle system in C-Shop. If you got lost at any point or would like to see a written version of this tutorial, check out the blog post linked in the description. As always, thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you in the next.